get that it. Okay. So anyway, so you are very well known. The cutting line is automatically decided using the microplastic. It's a really good uh, instrument. So if you set uh, the target of the tibia bone cut is uh, same thickness as tibia component and bearing thickness. Okay. The normal tibia component thickness is three millimeter and three millimeter bearing is three, but actually 3.5. We call three millimeter bearing, but actually it's thickness is 3.5. So actually this distance should be 6.5 millimeter for the bearing number the three and 7.5 millimeter and for the bearing number seven. Okay, uh, anyway, so it, the important is the cutting thickness is decided at uh, six or seven millimeter. That is uh, depend on the desired uh, bearing you want to use. Anyway, so how to decide this one cutting line? Uh, the cutting line deciding using the sizing spoon. The, the sizing spoon is inserted the lowest point of the media femoral condyle and then connect with cutting rod with Z clamp. The Z clamp, uh, the function of Z clamp is make the uh, space distance between the spoon and the cutting block. Okay. So uh, the first, this uh, Z clamp is numbered as three or four. Three Z clamp is target for usage of three bearing, number three bearing. And four G gramp is uh, for the four millimeter bearings. So uh, it is the surgeon uh, prefer, uh, preference. Uh, some surgeon prefer to use three, another surgeon prefer to use four. Well, uh, that, is the reason uh, we talk about it later. Anyway, so insert a spoon and clamp a G clamp. In another uh, important function is to set this G, uh, spoon gauge and cutting rock to be parallel to each other. So horizontally and sidetally, this is another important. So after the clamping, uh, these three cutting rock and the clamp and spoon gauge are uh, very securely fixed to each other. At, the, at this time, we should make sure two points. One point is this spoon gauge is inserted the lowest point of the media femoral component. Otherwise, if it come out from the lowest point, the spoon level will rise up and eventually cutting line should go up. But if you have a way cut uh, upper level than uh, the ideal level. So uh, in this situation, the uh, spoon should be confirmed that uh, it is inserted the lowest point. So you should repeat it, repeat it. Uh, because the clamp uh, make the spoon a little bit sliding medially or laterally, because have a uh, carefully looking, if you make Z clamp, the crumb move on the cutting rod, uh, slightly, medially, or laterally. So at the same time, this spoon is moved, possibly, uh, according to the the crumb movement during the clamping. So it's a very small thing, but 
pointing to the lowest point is really important. Then the second one is the space. Of course, on the manual of X Oxford D recommend to the using a template preoperatively using the preoperative rather X-ray. But in fact, I don't uh I do not do the preoperative planning. Uh, because the previous year we've got the film and using a shaka and overlap uh, this uh, template, it's quite easy. But my, but my hip surgeon still do like this. But now, uh, the most popular image is on screen. So it's quite difficult to adjust the magnification of, of uh, the image and the magnification of the templates. Furthermore, uh, this is quite a, uh, it is very changeable. So, yeah, maybe because uh, the X ray can't not this, uh, show the cartridge. So, size can be uh, changed by volume of cartridge. So, I don't uh, believe the preoperative template. What's further? says that you must do preoperative pre planning. So anyway, intraoperative plan uh, measurement is quite important. So the key point is there is enough space at the tip of the spoon gauge and bony surface. So uh, sometimes so some surgeon measure the this size of the posterior fondal and putting uh, the edge, posterior edge of the spoon gauge on the posterior cartridge and in the same time select select the uh, spoon gauge uh, so as to the tip touch the anterior bony surface in the both sides posterior and anterior uh, are touch on the anterior and posterior side. But this is incorrect. The purpose of the spoon gauge is to simulate the patient not native articular surface. Maybe I already said in the previous uh, lecture, the secondary can be simulated as the subosphere between 20 or 30 degree to the 120 degrees. So in this area, it's a virtually simulated uh, with circle, but uh, that is, uh, uh, this is, uh, we can simulate this uh, postponder as the sub circle or sphere when the cut is it cartridge is completely known. So, but at the time, the cartridge already gone out. So we need to imagine where is the, the patient for disease at the surface. So that should be at least two millimeters apart from the bunny surface. Uh, in, if the patient has no uh, bone wear, if the patient has bone wear, we need to uh, a bigger one. So this space should be more than two millimeters, three or four millimeters. So roughly saying, if there is no bone loss, the only the cartridge loss, so this design should be two millimeter. And if the, you you think that this patient has uh, some amount of bone wear, you should measure this distance at least three different. So this depends on the situation. But never use spoon gauge to touch on the both sides. 
that is two uh, pitfalls to make that this uh, decide that this the uh, uh, sorry size of the fiber component. Then trap. And uh, I'm sorry, this this is a little bit difficult to identify. On this cutting block, uh, small notch here. Or small notch here, maybe. This notch is for Saratendo. In most cases, this notch on the cutting block can catch the Saratendo. Then, uh, that is a right place of a medium natural uh, position of this cutting block. Uh, because most studies show that around uh, the center or a little media side is considered to be the center of the proximal uh, tibial axis. Well, some surgeons do the media third, some surgeons the media at the tendon border or center of the tendon or tibial border. Oh, but this pinpoint is near the proximal tibial axis. Anyway, uh, that is uh, a difference. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, previously, I used this pin with a drilling and in part inserted directly, hitting the hammer. But we experienced four cases of lateral insufficient capacity and one complete fracture. Uh, but the uh, left -hand side is supported by the fibra. So it's an external fixation or a casting. Uh, we don't need uh, such, such treatment, only observation, even the patient with a complete fracture. Then the fracture, all fracture healed and very free. But mm, to avoid uh, this trouble, I use the get coloring and make a pregnant and insert the pin. It's very uh, dangerous to make the pinning. And don't use these pimples. Never use these pimples because uh, this pin pinhole is very very close to the keel. Or uh, sometimes uh, this pin breaks uh, the anterior co cortex. Then eventually fracture can occur. So according to our uh, patients. Uh, around two third patient, uh, the fracture from the posterior. But around one third patient, the fracture line lasts anterior. So not only the right posterior, and, but also the anterior cortex is very important. So never break the anterior cortex. <laughs> Please use the most lateral pole. That is uh, uh, just on the road, same line on the road. So, uh, using the pinball, we can evaluate what is the proximal reference point to uh, to make the cutting line here. So maybe this line is the center of the ankle, and the proximal one is this hole. Then you can image that why is the road. Is set very the bone cut. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so microplasty is very precise and repro uh, reproducible, very good tool. So you should master uh, this uh, basic of this microplasty tool. Okay. What is this? Well, I mean, how do you think? 